Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson eight, we'll be covering the histogram. Just as a reminder, we suggest watching each video twice, just watching through the first time and then watching and following along the second. To start off today's video, we're gonna go over how to create a histogram. As you can see on the left-hand side, we already have a data set that consists of exam scores for a class. It's important that we look at some statistics about the scores, which I have summarized below here. You can see that the lowest mark was a 50, the highest mark was 92, the mean is 71, and the median is 70.5. Now you might be wondering what exactly is the median. Median is a middle number when you sort the values from lowest to highest or highest to lowest. Since there are 30 records in this data set, the median will be the average of the middle two numbers, which in this case is 70 and 71. So when we take the average of these two numbers, we get 70.5, which is how we get this median value here. So we can conclude that the exam did seem pretty difficult since half the class got below 70.5. We want to know more about the distribution of exam scores, so let's create a histogram to visualize it. There are two ways to create a histogram, I'll show you the easy way first. To start, we're gonna highlight our entire scores column, including the header, and we're gonna go to the Insert tab here. Go to the Insert Statistics Chart Options and choose the first choice under the histogram header. So just taking a quick look at our histogram here, you can see that the x-axis shows the score ranges and the y-axis shows the frequency or count of the score ranges. So let's add those axis titles on and then edit all of them to make sure that our graph is nice and descriptive. Our chart title will be exam score distribution. Our axis, x axis title will be score range and our y axis title will be count. So if we take a second and look at our score ranges, specifically our last one here, you can see that it's 89 to 102. This doesn't make a lot of sense because it's impossible to score higher than a 100 on an exam. So how do we change our score ranges so that it only goes to 100? Let's right click on our score range labels and choose the format axis option here. I'm going to check off the bin width option here on the right hand side and change that 13 to a 10 and press enter. So you can see that's a lot better. What exactly is a bin? A bin is a bucket and each score range is a bin. So for example, the first bin is from 50 to 60, the second bin is from 60 to 70, and so on. But if an exam score is exactly 60, which bin should it be included in, the first or the second? Let's take a closer look. I'm just gonna move my chart up here closer to the top. So if we look back at our data set, the number of scores under a 60 is five. So those are those five highlighted right there. However, if we look on our chart here, you can see that the value for the scores um, under 60 is six. So that means that this 50 to 60 range is including these five values plus the 60. Let's change this 61 to a 60 to test our assumption. So we can see now that the value has gone up to seven. Another way we can edit the chart is by changing the number of bins we have. To do this, I'm gonna take a copy of my original chart just so we can do a comparison at the end. To do this, I'm going to right click on my score range and go to the format axis option again. This time I'm going to check off the number of bins circle and change the five that Excel automatically uses to six and press enter. So looking at both charts, which one do you guys think is better? I like the one on the left hand side, which is the first one we made just because it makes more sense putting these score ranges in those in intervals of 10 instead of these weird intervals here is a lot better. 
So let's delete this second chart here and continue working on the first one we made. Now the last change that I want to show you is that the chart or the histogram that you make will change as you edit your exam scores in the data column. So let's uh, change this first 50 to a 49 to see what happens to our histogram. So you can see the histogram looks pretty different and our score range has changed as well. Let's change that 49 now to a 36. So again, the histogram looks very different now and our score ranges are again are different. So I'm going to change this back to a 50 so we can get our original histogram back. All right, so it's clear that we want our original score ranges because what we have here is very nice, but how do we keep those score ranges if we want to change our data? That's when we'll have to use the second method to create a histogram chart. All right, now we're going to go over the second method of making a histogram that allows you to control the score range better. So you can see on the left-hand side, I have a similar data set that involves uh, exam scores, and then I also have a column pre-made here, which is the score ranges that I want along my x-axis. So the problem with this score range column is that it's formatted in a way that Excel won't be able to understand. This means we need to create a new column and format these ranges in a way that Excel will be able to successfully put them into a histogram. So to do that, I'm going to make a new column here and call it bins upper limit. To fill in this column, I'm just going to take the upper bound of each score range to its corresponding row. So in this case, the first one would be 59, the second one would be 69, and so on. In this case, for greater than or equal to 90, we're just going to leave it blank because technically the upper bound is infinite. So now that we have the uh, score range in our bins upper limit column correctly formatted, and our scores column, we can go ahead and make the histogram. I'm going to go to the data tab at the top here and go all the way to the right hand side to select the data analysis tool. Now this is a special add on that not all of you might have enabled. So I'll just quickly go over that to make sure we're all on the same page before we start making the histogram. So click the file tab over on the left hand side and go all the way down to the bottom here to select the options tab. You'll select the second last option on the side here where it says add-ins and make sure you have that analysis tool pack highlighted and press OK. All right, so now that everybody has that data analysis tool enabled, let's go back to our data tab and press on that tool. You might have to scroll down a bit to find it, but you can see there's many different options here but we're going to highlight histogram just by clicking on it and pressing OK. So our input range has a blank box. We are going to click on that and then just select our entire score range column. Our bin range is the same thing. Click on there and just highlight the bins upper limit column. Our output range, I'm just going to select a random cell where I want a frequency table, which we'll go over in a minute to be made. And I'm going to select F3. Make sure that the chart output box here at the very bottom is checked off because that will make sure that Excel not only creates a frequency table for us but also a histogram which is what we want. All right so I'll press OK and you can see there we go here's the frequency table and here's the histogram. Taking a quick look at the histogram it looks pretty strange doesn't really look like the histograms that we were making a couple moments ago. So let's make some changes to this to make it look better. The first thing we can actually do is delete the frequency legend because we don't need it and it just adds extra clutter to our histogram. I'm going to edit my chart title to exam scores uh, distribution. My x-axis is going to be exam score range and my y-axis will be count. So that's a bit better but we want to get rid of those spaces that are in between each column. To do this just click on your chart and go to the chart design option. 
go to the left hand side and choose the quick layout option here and just scroll through all the options until you find the one that looks most like the histogram. So in my case, that's layout eight for me. So I'm going to select that one. All right, again, so looking better, but it's missing the borders on each of the columns. To add this, right click on the area of the columns and go to the outline tab here and just select black. So now those borders and outlines are added. The last change that we want to make is actually in our frequency table to our score ranges. If we look along our X axis here, it isn't exactly what we want. Instead, we want it to be like this column that we have here that we started off the video with. So let's go into our bin column here and just change it to match our score range column. All right, and there you go. You can see those changes were made on our histogram, which makes our chart look already a lot better. So the good thing about making a histogram using this second method is that you have control over the score range for the bins. But the problem is, is that if this histogram is not linked to this score column here. So any changes that we make in this raw data will not be translated over into our histogram. So let's try and play around with this a bit. If we scroll down to the bottom here, you can see our highest score is a 92. And that's actually the only score that is uh, greater than or equal to 90. And you can see by looking at our frequency table, there's one there. And then in our histogram, there's one value there, which represents that 92. So what was going to happen if we change the 50, so the first score that we have, to a 95? All right, so you can see that this value should have changed to 2 but our frequency table is still saying the, that there's only one value that is greater than or equal to 90, and our histogram is doing the same thing. So is this good or bad? Well, it's not very useful because the chart doesn't change with the updated data. So let's change this 95 back to a 50, just so that we're back to our original data set. You might be wondering, how do we fix this problem? It turns out that we have to create a separate live frequency table. So I'm going to create a new column here and call it a live frequency table. To make this, I'm going to use the function frequency and select it. For my data array, I'm just going to select my entire score column. And for my bins array, I'll just select my bins upper limit and then close the bracket. So you can see that live frequency table is the same as my original frequency table, but the most important difference to note between the two is that this first or this first frequency table that we made here with our histogram is the frequency table that is connected to the chart. This live frequency table isn't connected to our histogram, so any changes here will not be displayed in our histogram. I'm actually going to highlight this blue and bold it so that we can tell them apart a bit better. So again, the live frequency table is not connected to our histogram, where this original frequency table, which I'll highlight in red, is connected to our histogram. All right, so let's try and change some data now. So let's change this 50 back to a 95 and see what happens. So as you can see, our live frequency table has updated its values, but just like we expected, our original frequency table and our histogram both haven't updated to display the new values. So what I'm going to do is actually highlight my whole live frequency table column, right click, press copy, and just paste those new values into my original frequency table that's connected to my histogram. To do this, I'm going to go into Paste Special and select Paste Values. So you can see by doing that, our histogram has now changed to reflect the change in our score column. So if we go here, the value is now 2. Let's do another change. Let's change that from 95 to 39. As you can see, 
So as you can see, the live frequency table, which is highlighted in blue, has changed, but the original frequency table highlighted in red, which is connected to our histogram here, hasn't changed. So again, we have to highlight these values, right click, press copy, and paste them as values again in this table here. So our histogram has updated with the new values. So let's change this back to 50 so that we return back to that original graph we started with. All right, there we go. So as you can see, making the histogram using the second method takes more time and is more complicated, but it is better because you have control over the score ranges. So just before we wrap up for the day, let's do a quick summary. Today we learned how to create histograms using two different methods and how to create a frequency table. It's important to remember that a histogram displays the distribution of a data set. In the next lesson, we'll go over box plots, which are another type of distribution plot. Thank you for watching and we will see you next lesson.